Hey everybody, it's Philip Seagraves. Hope everybody's having a great day. We're going to do some basic linear programming and optimization in Excel today. I'm Philip Seagraves and I'll be presenting today, but a special thanks goes out to Dr. Satish Nargunkar for providing this wonderful example. All right, let's jump right into it. Our problem is a it's a transportation problem. We've got three factories, we've got three warehouses, and each of our warehouses are close to the customers where we have the demand for our products. Each warehouse uh, next week is going to sell uh, 2,000, 2,000, and 1,000 for warehouses A, B, and C. But each of our factories will make a different quantity. Factory 1 makes 1,000, 2 makes 1,500, and Factory 3 will make 2,500. So obviously these two columns add up, and the out column and the row add up to 5,000 units. Fortunately, our demand and, and supply are balanced in this example. But we also have costs. The cost to ship product from Factory 1 to Warehouse B, I'm sorry, Warehouse A is 5 units, or $5. The cost to ship product from Factory 3 to Warehouse B is 4, and so forth. So how in the world do we solve this problem? Well, first let's set this up. And our goal is to minimize our shipping costs. So how much material we're going to ship from each factory to each warehouse, and our goal is to minimize our total costs. Well, with first, let's figure out what our total costs are going to be. So right now we've got a, a grid up here or an array that's got our, our factories and our warehouses and our cost to ship. Let's just copy this same thing, and we'll kind of reuse this same format. I'm going to control C to copy in Excel. I'm going to control V to paste it. And let's change um, all of these values in here. We will make them, let's say, 200. I'm going to copy that 200, control C. I'm going to highlight this area and control V, and I'll make 200s in all those areas. And now what I want to do is go ahead and add these up because I want to in Excel, I'm going to change the, and, and now these are the numbers that I'm going to ship from Factory 1 to Warehouse A. And I'm going to need to know how many I ship to multiply by the cost to come up with our total cost, which is what we're ultimately going to try to minimize. So to know, since I know these are going to be the values ultimately I want to change, I'm going to highlight those in yellow just to make it easy to remember. And let's go ahead and and put a sum across each of these cells and we're going to put a sum on each of these rows because what we want to do is make sure that the amount that we do ship adds up to the same that we can ship from each factory. So let's go ahead and put a sum here and I will I can do that a couple of ways. I can click the Excel Auto Sum button. It'll automatically pick those values and I can just drag that across to copy it. I can also type equals sum and just highlight these values here like so close my parentheses hit enter does the same thing and I'll drag those down now what we can also do here is it's going to be the same either way but I'll just do a quick auto sum on that also and we'll see that the quantities uh, don't add up to our 5,000 we're going to fix that in a little while but what we really care about is our costs so what is it going to cost? Let's put our costs up here. Cost, exclamation point. All right, we're going to have uh, a number of different costs to deal with. We're going to have a cost for shipping from factory one to warehouse A. So what is that going to be? That's going to be five times 200 or 1,000. Well, all I really care about is my total costs. So let's get a total cost for shipping product into each warehouse. So let's say, we'll move this up here one row so it lines up. So for warehouse A, it's going to cost us the 5 times the 200 plus the 8 times the 200 plus the 5 times the 200. And we're going to use Excel's sum product function, S-U-M-P-R-O-D-U-C-T. And now we're going to multiply each value in two arrays and add up the total. So I'm going to multiply the 5 8 and the 5 times the 200, the 200 and the 200 respectively, and I get 3,600. Now when I just drag that down, it's smart enough to use the second row 
where else B and where else B. And it's going to use the third row. And now what I'm trying to do is minimize these totals. So I'm going to put another sum here. And now I have 10,200. I could have done an auto sum for all of the things. So we'll show you how I could have done that as well. Equal, I'm sorry, uh, sum product. We're going to sum this entire array here. Multiply those times this entire array here. And you'll see it's going to add up to that same 10,200. Bam, there we go. So just for kicks and giggles, we'll delete that. And we're going to use this fancy function here. And what we want to do is minimize our total shipping costs. And let's go ahead and make that bad boy nice big green. And we will, uh, let's format that. We'll put a little underline here. I better move this guy out of the way so we can see what the heck we're doing. We're going to, let's uh, go ahead and make this guy um, Ah, let's not format it. Let's just get to business here. All right, so we're going to try to minimize this 10,200 a number. Now, let's bring up the magic button, the magic tool in Excel called Solver. And this is going to do the optimization work for us. It's going to change those values in yellow and give us the combination of those values that are going to minimize a $10,200 cost. What's showing there is 10,200. But, We've got some constraints to deal with here. First, let's tell what we want to do. We want to set this cell here, bam, to the minimum possible value by changing, bam, this array here. But we got some issues. We need to make sure that our supplies add up to the values down here. We need to make sure the amount that we um, that are demanded at each warehouse up here match the ones that are down here. So we do have some constraints to deal with here. So let's go ahead and do those. Let's take care of those guys. We want to make sure that the values here, the amount that we need to supply, that we can supply from factory one, equals the amount that we actually do supply. So we're going to add that. And we're going to do the same thing for each one of these. This one has got to equal the value that we have down here. We're going to add that constraint and we're going to add, it'd be great if we could use formulas up here. Unfortunately, you have to actually point to cells in Excel and, um, and do it that way. We can't use formulas like the sum and add those up or anything like that. So we're going to say that is equal to the value down here and we're going to add that. And then we got to do the same thing over here. We're going to, we want this 2000 uh, value there to equal what is in this column here because that's the most we're going to sell at a warehouse uh, A is the 2000 and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here for our 2000 in this one Let's see for warehouse B it's got to be equal to the amount that we pick there and then we're going to do the same sorry I'm going kind of fast I just don't want to bore the people that are like really breezing ahead with me here so we're going to do an equals and down here we're going to add those. Ah, one more thing. What do you think these values have to be here? They have to be positive. They can't be negative. Um, they also need to be whole numbers. So let's first deal with the whole numbers thing. Going to make all these values have to be greater than or equal to zero. We're going to add that. Now you're going to notice here we have an item here called um, integer. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say these values here and we're going to go back and they need to be integers. And we're going to add that. And there's one thing that we could have done. We really didn't have to do this in Excel because it'll handle it for us, but I just want to show you how you could set values greater than or equal to something. But we're going to cancel here once you're done entering all your references, don't hit OK. It thinks you're trying to add another one. Just say Cancel, and you'll show all the constraints that we've added. We've added our integer, our greater than or equal to zero. This is the one that we didn't technically have to add because of our options. We can have Assume Non-Negative, and it'll take care of that for you. We're going to assume a linear model and make it run a little bit faster because we don't have any, um, any 
uh, quadratics or any nonlinear functions that are in our that are on our model here. And you see the position is 0 0.00001. That it's going to get that close to the value and it's going to stop. What that means is we may end up with some values in here that aren't zeros, but that's okay. I am going because I'm going to show you all we'll do is just change our significant digits uh, and and we'll just have uh, no decimals and it'll all show as zeros. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve our problem. And let's see what happens. Solve. All right. 23,000 is the minimum cost. We don't have to save our scenario here because Excel automatically saves if you have only one model. Um, if you have multiple models where you wanted to try different constraints and different things, you'd want to go ahead and save it. But if I say OK, it's going to keep it. Now you notice here I have zeros and zeros there, but let's let's take a look at what's really behind the scenes here. If I were to format these cells and go into number and just change this to um, let's say many many decimal points, we're going to end up with ah oh, we didn't have enough here. It would show if I had it set up for scientific notation. Perhaps I can do that here. We'll change it back to general. I'm going to say OK. Oh, it did, it did go ahead and approach zero. So they did set to zero. But a lot of times you'll end up here with some crazy scientific notation, 1.3e to the negative uh, 15, which means you've got 15 zeros before the digits are showing there. Just go ahead and set this with your decimals to you know no decimal places, and it'll show correctly. So we solved it. Factory 1 is going to ship 1,000 to warehouse A. Factory 2 is going to ship... 500 to B, 1,000 to C, factory 3 is going to ship 1,000 to A, 1,500 to B, and we're going to minimize our cost at 23,000 bucks. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. This has been Philip Seagraves doing a basic linear programming model in Excel. It's been great uh, doing these for you guys, and please keep the feedback and the comments coming. It's great hearing from you. Bye.